Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News, as you can see here, recording from my mobile studio setup, although the audio is crystal clear. We've got a Nick Vile beef happening, one that he might not even know is going on. We reported he might be filming that new show, Special Forces, in New Zealand. Maybe he's back. Maybe he's not on that show. He had alluded he's going to be on a dating, or, excuse me, on a reality show. Well, a podcast that is very large has ripped into Nick in his relationship and also uh, more petty grievances that have to do with the podcasting world. And we will spend a little bit more time addressing the podcast grievance because that's very interesting as a podcaster, YouTuber, and stand-up comedian. Uh, you don't go at the throat of the king, Nick, here, but uh, we've got a podcast called You Up uh, by Jared Freed. He's a very funny stand-up comedian. He's got great credits, nationally touring, uh, and he tells it how it is. And we appreciate authenticity at the very least, whether you agree with him or not. It's very interesting to hear him just absolutely level Nick in his opinion for not inviting him on Nick's podcast, which like, we'll get into it. I want you to hear what he has to say first, uh, but this is actually from the June 27th episode, uh, but I'm just catching wind of it right now. So let's have a listen to what he said. We'll pause and critique as we go. Connected to people and then you go on a day with someone like, that's why when someone's like, you know, you know, I'll, I'll mention, I won't mention names, but Nick Vial dating a 20 year old. <laughs> he goes, I won't mention names, but Nick, okay. Or whatever the fuck she is. He's all right. You know, like, <laughs> well, I won't mention names, oh, but. <laughs> he doesn't want us on his podcast. Oh, yeah. He doesn't want to be the worst person on his own podcast, he hates I guess. Us. Yikes says Nick doesn't want to be doesn't want us on his podcast. He doesn't want to be the worst person on his podcast. Shots fired. We love a good podcast war. So obviously there's a it's a petty grievance in the fact that clearly Jared is upset here that Nick wouldn't have him on his show. But that's what the podcasting game is all about. Trying to leverage opportunity. Who's got a bigger following this or that. But Jared's got a big following. So it could be. I mean, Jared's not wrong to to think here that Nick doesn't want Jared on because Jared's a funny guy who creates content that would be threatening, I guess, to Nick's brand. And um, anyway, he he further uh, uh, t uh, kind of uh, discusses the uh, lack of uh, friendship that's going on there. Yeah, he doesn't want us on. He doesn't want you know. I don't know. So, but you go. And we're cool with it. <laughs> Should we cut that out? No, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Whatever. I mean, Nick. We're, we're willing, ready, and able. What did we do? Just let us know what we did. We just want to come on your podcast and steal your audience from you. Yeah. That's it. That's how he feels. That's how, that's probably why he won't have us on. Jared says Nick feels if he has Jared on that the audience will like Jared so much they'll go from Nick. It's a very scarce way of thinking. I don't disagree with uh, Jared's opinion here. I mean, it's his opinion to have, but it's a very interesting opinion that he thinks Nick doesn't want to have him on. I mean, Nick does love having celebrities on, but not po fellow podcasters, if that makes sense. So it could very much be in his business plan. I mean, uh, to be to be quite honest here, Nick's uh, done nothing but sing my praises, but at the same time, privately, and also has never asked me to be on. So I kind of agree with Jared that there might be some sort of... Um, a club, a cool kid club thing happening here, where of course Nick has on, uh, you know, a fam famous uh, comedians and other, you know, uh, influencer type people. But maybe it's part of his brand to not have anybody on that is, I guess, in his same bubble of content creator vibes. I know he worked hard for that audience. He went on The Bachelor like fifteen, 15 times. Yeah, the guy <laughs> so, went to work. Had a lot it. of work done in the now, hospital to get those abs. No, we're definitely not getting on. Allegedly. <laughs> They go, Nick worked hard for that audience. He, he went on The Bachelor. I can understand that vibe from someone like Jared, who pretty much worked his way up through the New York comedy scene and this and that, and someone like myself who's worked my way through the comedy scene, where, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of spite when you see someone who just gets famous for no reason other than they made it onto the show. But, but at the same time, you can't fault Nick for playing the cards he was dealt. You know what I mean? Ah, he stinks. Won't have us on. Yeah. We're 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 coming with the the Betches brand. You know, the, you, we were willing to trade goods. Guess what, Nick? We're gonna you, be we're gonna be on one day. No, whether you no. know it or not. <laughs> <laughs> this will be on. He'll play this clip and yes. make fun of us or something. It's but, a war. We're starting a war. That's like, the only way to go, yeah. I guess. We I, gotta be not? controversial. Yeah. 
I actually don't disagree with him. Starting a podcast war. I mean, this goes back to the radio days where, oh, we're 106.9 The Rock and we're beefing with 94.5 The Jam. And it's like it it, uh, it, it rallies your audience around each other. Uh, I don't know if this is a war Nick wants to get involved in because it, it just, trust me when I say this, the last person you ever want to pick a fight with on the internet is a comedian. They're going to get the last laugh. They're going to find a way to cut through to you. We'll yeah, try. but when you date like someone who's 21... I'm 38. Right. If I, you know, what's the I, youngest you would go? Fuck or date? Um, Two different things. Both, to give me both. <laughs> give me both. I'm not looking to date someone 27 and below. Okay. Date. Yeah. So then they go through age gap relationships and mention Nick's relationship, uh, of course. And again, it's one thing. I mean, for me personally, I, I wouldn't get involved in the judgment of someone else's adult consensual relationship. But they can. They can do whatever they want. Uh, we do cover this. Let's go to the 945 mark here. And you can hear them just blasting Nick for, um, you know, uh, for, for the large age gap. Nick's 42, I think, is uh, his fiance is 24. They're engaged, right? They're not married. Are they? No, they're engaged. Think like, how do people connect of that differing of ages? Like, yeah, I don't know. Because connect I, I, over. I know I wouldn't. It always seems like more of a the bigger the age gap, the more it seems like a blatant like trade of sex for money. Uh, and that's even usually the, what you. That's usually what it what it appears to be. The larger the age gap, she says. The larger the age gap, it's because a trade for sex versus money. Nick, of course, having money and her being sexual. I I, I think that's what they're trying to say here. Um, the, the, the relationship equity. And what a person offers comes in so many different things. Some people like security, so they might end up with an older person who has more of a secure place in their life. Some people might value attraction and what that person brings to the table. So it's always different. But yeah, in an age gap, it's not usually a young person going after an older person who's poor. It's usually an older person who's established. But hey, maybe it fits into their love language. Maybe they're mature for their age. Like when you get into the adult age gap thing, it's like, okay, we're not talking about grooming here. Some people will argue that you are, but it's a tough conversation to have. You go, look, she's all she's she's 24. She's a she's well into being an adult, right? And maybe he's operating at a mid 20s maturity level. You know, he's gone through past relationships that didn't work out. Uh, they actually had mentioned the same thing with Leo DiCaprio, where Leo DiCaprio is clearly not wanting is someone who's looking to settle down. So he keeps going younger and younger. You can judge it all you want. It's super legal, though. But of course, obviously, it's really more about like the public sort of side eyeing of it. Right. I, I would also argue if I wanted to go deeper. Yeah. If I wanted to make, you know, do my like, you know, do an impression of Dr. Naomi. Okay. Let's hear um, it. I would say like a, an exchange of comfort for status. You right. know, you know, sex is the dirty, icky way to look at it. I understand. There's also a thing with men of like, you know, you, you, you catch your tiger and put the the head on the wall. So right. to speak. Say so there's the ickiest way. Right. Yes. To, to make it even ickier. Yes. To not these, objectify no, anyone. Yes. Let me just objectify yes. a little more. No, but right. that's kind of, yeah. you know, these are questions we would have had for Nick if he had wanted to come on this podcast and had us on. But, yeah. uh, you know, I guess we won't be able to ask him. How old is Nick? 85. <laughs> no, that's Al Pacino. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, he's got to be around my age, 38. 42. 42? 42? Come on, Nick. Oh, come on. Twice. She's, he's How old is she? Twice your age. How old is she so we're not, like, talking out of school? 13? <laughs> 18-year age grab? No, but they 18. So what, she's 24? That doesn't tell the story. 24. 24. 24. And they're now married how many years? Engaged. They got married? They're engaged? First engaged. They've been together how many years? Yeah. Together how long? You know, we were saying the same thing about um, on the At Batches podcast about Leonardo DiCaprio. All right, so then they go into DiCaprio and they talk a little bit more about the subject. And I'll just say this. I've, I've been careful to not necessarily trash talk. I'm trying. I mean, I, uh, this is so funny. I, I pick and choose who I trash talk. It's a political game. I don't have the feelings Jared Freed has for Nick where he's like, F that guy. But but to be completely honest, I do feel in my own way slighted by Nick like a lot of people do. And I'll get to that in a second. Here's what Courtney Robertson had to say. We covered this last week. 
of course, Courtney Robertson before Nick's time, but the greatest villain of all time, starting a new podcast. Hey, help me out. Maybe come on my show. You know, that's what alumni should do. They should help each other out. They should elevate each other. Oh, you're doing a podcast? Oh, come on, yours. Not exactly what does it do for my brand, but how do we help each other? So to speak. Right. And I know you had beef with Nick Vial, that little yeah. weasel. Ugh. I mean, I've asked him to come on my podcast so many times, and he said yes, and then he ghosted yeah. me. But was there ever... So, Courtney Robertson, just in an aside, and by the way, we'll get her on Driving with Dave soon, and we will for sure ask about this, calls Nick a weasel, says she asked him, she did his podcast, asked him to do hers, and he ghosted on her. And that's that, that gets around in the podcasting community. It's almost like if you're a mechanic and you've been known to like dupe your clients, it's like, no, you want a mechanic who's going to be honest with you. And in the podcasting world, it is very unique in that podcasting the best way to grow is to do each other's show. So if Nick's saying, hey, come on my show, kind of like how Nick had Reality Steve on his show, then it would be customary for Nick Vial to do Reality Steve's podcast. You understand? It would be customary to do that swap. That's how it should work. And it's not like Jared's podcast is a sort of no-name podcast. He's ranked 32 in the American society and culture. And Nick's podcast is ranked 12th in society and culture. And you might think, oh, Nick's ranked 20 higher. No, no. Listen, if you're in the top 50, it fluctuating. They're essentially neck and neck. It probably would be good business for Nick to go on Jared's podcast to get new audience. But at the same time, if Nick's saying, hey, look, we get 100,000 downloads a day. I don't need to go on anybody's podcast. I don't want to do that. That's fine, too. Just know that there's a lot of pettiness that happens in the podcast world and you're going to get called out. You know what I mean? That's just what happens. Now, I completely understand why Nick wouldn't ask me to be on his podcast. I'm not Justin Long. I'm not uh, one of these comics with a million followers or one of these influencers. I just think I'd be a damn good guest because I know what I'm talking about. I've been in this game for a while. Uh, but I can't possibly judge him because I have 19,000 Instagram followers. Do you know what I mean? Everyone who follows me already knows Nick. So I understand the business of it and I can feel a certain way, but I can also just use that energy to become undeniable and better. And would Nick do driving with Dave? I don't even know. Maybe I would ask him out of curiosity just to see what he would say. I think we'd have a good conversation, but I'm also aware that he must know that channels like mine are critical of him. But at the same time, we've received nothing but praise from him privately for the work that we're doing. My guess is he has a way of, and my guess would be something that's pretty highly educated in the sense that, you know, everyone, everyone who does this podcasting game talks to each other behind the scenes. My guess would be, when a channel like mine or another's takes off, Nick's one of the first people to send them a message and kind of get them not on his payroll in any sort of way, but there is a bias when you know somebody to not exactly trash them in one way or another. We've never really trashed Nick. I think we've been fair with the different criticisms of him, mainly the criticism of how he um, sort of treated Nick Thompson when it came to the UCAN Foundation, a foundation that is trying to raise mental health awareness in the reality world. Nick had a very triggered response to that. So interesting, too, that he actually received um, criticism from Dr. Diane Strakowski, who was on his podcast. So um, I think it's OK and it's normal to criticize people's opinions on things as a person. I think Nick's doing the best he can. I think he's taking every tool he has and trying to apply it. And he's done a damn good job on the business level. But sometimes that creates enemies and clearly we see one here with Jared Freed. Let me know what you guys think. That's probably going to be it for me today. We'll have the sort of roundup of all the other entertainment news we didn't get to on today's podcast, Bachelor Rush Hour. We'll see you then. Bye, guys.